Hello and welcome back to another video and I've done one of these before um, but I have another thin client on my hand and these are flooding the market especially in the US uh, if you see if you go on eBay you, get, you can get secondhand thin clients for fairly cheap uh, this is another one of them this is the HP Elite Desk, Elite Desk 5705G2 desktop mini quite a long name there but um, just so this is one of the better ones the couple of AMD ones I've shown you before were less than optimal for day-to-day -day use but this is pretty good um, so let's go with the IO and then we'll talk about the CPU and other things so we have a couple of USB ports couple of USB 3 couple of USB 2 gigabit Ethernet your power in which is uh, HP standard laptop power two display ports and a VGA port and up front audio audio and mic and a couple other USB 3 and the power button that's it in terms of IO um, this thing is powered by a bulldozer so uh, AMD A10 it's a bulldozer generation um, or like one of the bulldozer base generation so yes it is the half FPU unit one or if you're like me you say it's not quad core it's two cores um, hyper threaded in a way um, that's how Linux recognizes it but AMD's admin to call it quad core and they got sued for it long story short uh, I'll do another video on the bulldozer architecture at some point but just wanted to show you the thing here so as you can notice this is much beefier than the ones I've shown before uh, it has a big old heat sink and a big old fan for for this size sort of consumes the um, right side of the uh, hardware uh, of the chassis completely and on this side you have the storage or the SATA uh, tray it's actually a tray it's not I've not mounted the disk on it and um, yeah not much else so we're going to take this apart we're going to take a look at the saw there there's some good stuff hidden beneath the SATA uh, tray as well that we're going to take a look at there's a tiny little speaker on there that actually works fine um, as far as software goes I, I probably won't do the software bit on this video uh, but I've run Windows 10 on it I've run Linux on it everything works fine it has 8 gigs of memory I think there's one free slot for 16 but um, yeah this works just fine in terms of a day-to-day -day daily driver so a little bit behind story about this how I acquired this uh, David Tischler gave it to me he's a close friend and I like, have known him from the um, uh, community and we used to meet up uh, during events and finally got to meet him this uh, June um, in San Francisco so that's why I bought this from so the SATA cable is a bit of a problem because it can break weirdly at any point it's already fraying so I don't tend to remove it too often uh, because it then goes down to this weird connector and this is like a proprietary converter thing that I don't know if I'll be able to source from anywhere so with that done the SSD is out um, and I can continue to open this up um, it uses these weirdly large screws to set up everything even these so let me just go ahead and get something that can open this up alright so this is a comically large screwdriver to open something this small but it works so uh, you can use a flat head and that is what I'm doing with these screws and that makes the tray pop out and that reveals something I wasn't expecting that's an M.2 slot that's a full NVMe M.2 slot you can have your PCIe storage here super fast PCIe storage here and it should apparently work yeah so full size NVMe you have a uh, M.2 NGFF slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth these don't go anywhere I couldn't find like an onboard antenna point that I can hook on to so they have a slot um, they have a card. I don't have the antenna thingies, so need to figure out how to get an antennas either in there or outside the chassis or something like that. But that's for another time. Apart from that, you have your bias chip right here. A couple of 
things there. Um, and this is interesting. So you see that second DVI port right there. It's actually coming out of this. So this is a daughter plate that probably provides DVI. But it also has this little chip there um, that I don't know what it does or why it is. It could You could just have like a passive DVI pass through, but I don't know why they didn't do it. All right. It's, um, I have the data sheet here. That little board does, it's like a repeater. So they want to prevent signal loss coming from pins, whatever pin type is we need here to the actual display board. And that sort of, sort of does that make it a bit more compliant? I don't, yeah, that's what it looks like because it doesn't, it's not doing like a lot of stuff. It's, it's not like it's converting LVDS to DP or like MIPI DSI to DP or EDP to DP, but it's just doing dual mode display port to dual mode display port, just, you know, clearing out signals and making sure um, things go and get janky with the pass through and all. So I guess that's it. Um, I don't really know why they would do something like this if you if you break out DP here, you can just have a cable straight going through, like the DP cable is going to be a cable. But, all right, if, if you want to over-engineer a little bit, I'm going to stop you. Um, right, moving on. Let's take the heatsink out. Let's see, take a look at the goods. Let's see how everything works. Um, and, you know, the more interesting part. So, need to be a bit careful about those. That there are only three screws, but I don't want to stress them because they are sprained and let's see if, we, if there's any need to replace the thermal paste as well but this little thing was clocking up to 3.4 gigahertz which is quite a lot for you know a system this size with a tiny heatsink like this um, i know phones clock higher but you know from from 2015 with, with the nodes they had back then um, yeah, it's it's a lot to clock uh, more than three. So this am means it's doing it. I'll probably scrape something, but all right. I think that should just come off like that. And it also has like a yeah, it's an APU, so it has like inbuilt things. All right. So the heat sink, this one just lifts up. To reveal the memory the fans is, oh this is nice design i didn't need to remove the heatsink to access the memory so we have one stick of 8 gig um ddr3 sodium i can add another one and give it 16 i don't know what the maximum capacity is but 16 sounds enough and i think there's some fresh thermal paste applied so i don't know if david did that or it's fresh it's it looks very 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 fresh um but yeah, here's your APU and let's clean it up and take a look. So to sort of not change the focus of the camera and everything, um, I'll just click photos of the die and show it off um, and add it to the screen. But this is how it looks like. It's a large die because it has those four comparatively those two comparatively beefy <laughs> bulldozer cores with with the entire gpu and the beefy bulldozer cores are beefy because one core has two integer units and one fpu unit amd would like you to believe it's four cores with one integer unit each and half fpu unit but that's not the case so apart from that, there's not much here. It's a very sock-like, well, it's, it is a sock. Everything is broken out from there. Um, I'm not sure if I can like, let's try it and remove the PCB completely. Um, let's see, there's four screws here. I don't think anything's holding it back from there. And see if there's like a chip set at the back, but I believe this was a proper sock, so it, had VG, it has SATA, it had everything just directly from it. I might be wrong on a couple of things, um, but let's just see and try and open everything up. Now we can turn it around and there is not much. There's a Broadcom chip, which I'm guessing is the Ethernet. 
so this thing right there that broadcom chip does the ethernet and the nougaton chip not sure what that's doing We're close to zeta audio something uh, i think the audio chips on the front yep the real tech audio chip is on the front what is the nougaton thing doing all right so it is a super io controller maybe it does few i squared c for things maybe it does some of the usbs up front um maybe it does the sata as well so not sure what all it's doing from its proximity i can only tell, tell that it might do usb here or usb here a couple of usb 3s here maybe um audio has its separate chip so it's not doing audio um and i'm guessing the back usbs are from the chip directly but yeah it's a super io controller i've seen these in a lot of embedded motherboards because they usually um not, don't have a lot of io from the sock itself so they extend it uh, but these are not like south bridge or north bridge level of chips they are very basic um very basic io extension chips that they either take like uh, a pcie lane to do it or like just one usb lane and like act as a hub or act as a couple other things so they're not south bridge but like baby south bridge or like limited south bridge something like that um so let's just fit this back in trying to figure out the best way to do that everything into place and that looks like a good fit uh, all the wires back in I don't know they have like this thermal sensor in the front um, and that usually goes up to here so maybe they are sensing something um, some ambient temperature or something for fan control but that usually just sticks there yeah, I mean, if I have another 8 gig stick, I'd probably just move it to 16. I have some use for this hardware, not a whole lot. Um, but yeah, let's go back and assemble it. I have a couple of projects planned that will use this hardware, which I'm excited about. And I'll take you through all of that uh, once I'm sort of done figuring out the software side of the story for those projects all right everything's fixed wired up um so yeah i guess the i the data is remaining but for the most part this is it this is the thin client um i'll see if i have some performance numbers on the same let's see how long this video is and maybe i'll do the linux stuff on this video only or i'll make a part two um either way we'll see but um yeah so very nice options if you know like buys are at a crunch right now you can't buy them anywhere especially the de decent memory capacity ones other sbcs might be harder to get development kits might be harder to get so if your use case is basically running linux on something and having a decent amount of memory um these thin clients are actually fairly power efficient and um you can you know, run linux to your heart's content they don't really complain about anything uh, so they're available on ebay a lot of intel atom ones a lot of old amd one new amd ones um and they're not as expensive as the Ryzen embedded stuff uh, is recently. Um, so you can get these for pretty cheap. This one was for 25. So they are available in sub $50 range. So really, really, really good alternative. Um, as much as I'd love to recommend ARM to everyone, I know the silicon shortage has caused some issues in that space. So thank you so much for watching. Um, this was the hardware tour of the HP. Okay, let's read the name again. Right, well, yep, HP Elite Desk 705 G2 Mini. This one says it's G2 Mini, the 
back and back of it says it's Redist Elite Desk 705G2 Desktop Mini. So I'm not sure what to believe, but this is it. This is a pretty nice piece of kit. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. We'll explore the software options on these.